Welcome, everybody. We got a great show lined up today. Alex and I are back. Uh, Alex Krogh, Jason Shawcross, the Fantasy Football Sackos. Uh, we are talking week 12 waivers. That's right. Um, we're going to be going over that Taysom Hill magic. The the J.K. Dobbins explosion. He's great. J.K. is finally free. He's got COVID. <laughs> We're going to be talking about all that and more. (laughs) Stay with us. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krogh. Let's go. That's right. Welcome to today's show. We are excited to be talking about all of these high quality waivers. First of all, this is episode 50. Thank you guys, everybody, for listening to us uh, for this long. Ooh. Yeah, that's a fun little stat here for you. Um, right? But uh, yeah, welcome, everybody. Uh, it's Thanksgiving week. Probably be the best one of the show, actually. There you go, right? It's Thanksgiving week, so everybody, please stay safe. Enjoy the time that you get to spend with your family and your loved ones. Um 2020 has taken a lot, I think, from all of us, but there's still plenty to be thankful for. One of the things I'm thankful for is this podcast and fantasy football with my good friend, Alex Krogh. So, Alex, what are you thankful for this year? I'm thankful for Taysom Hill's uh, tight end eligibility. Uh, won me a couple <laughs> uh, leagues this week. Uh, so thank you for that. ESPN then, uh, only. <laughs> Every other platform was yeah, smart. Well, uh, you know. Okay. Man. Hey, don't hate the player, hate the game. Uh, I've been talking Taysom, Taysom Hill up preseason, during the season. When's he going to play? And then he played. It made me happy. And he didn't suck, actually. And dare I say he actually looked better than Drew Brees? Can anybody Um, suck against the freaking Falcons? Just saying. No, that's true. That that definitely helps. Um, No, uh, we're we're gonna kind of get into the into the thankfulness side of things in our in our pod that we record tomorrow, dropping later this week. So I won't bore people too much. Um, Just another another week of like. Just everybody's wildly inconsistent and trying to figure out who are going to be the most consistent people. And the the you know we're going to talk about people we've talked about previously on the pod today uh, from a waiver standpoint. And there there's a couple new names, but I mean at this point in the season we're going into week twelve. If you don't know some of this stuff, like I would be honestly surprised. Like the the waiver wire is just barren at this point. There was no significant injuries other than Joe Burrow, which destroys Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins' value yep. going forward. So there, there, there is there is unfortunately um, not not a ton to talk about. Um, but fe- feast or famine time, right? Um, ho- hopefully we can we can find a, a gem or two for you, um, and, and maybe get some advice if you've run through all your fab and and kind of figure out a strategy for you the rest of the season. There you go. All right. Well, you brought up. The Joe Burrow injury. So let's start there. Uh, he was carted off the field after suffering a left knee injury. So, I mean, it's a it's an ACL MCL. So he's gone. Uh, I think that yeah, my that immediate reaction is that T Higgins goes from a bona fide surefire wide receiver two to like a wide receiver four with upside, and that. Tyler Boyd is like a low end wide receiver too, probably like maybe a high end flex play. Yeah. I'm, I just, I don't trust Ryan Finley to throw them anybody the ball. And that offensive line is terrible. Everybody's gotten hurt. So I don't know. Any other thoughts on Cincinnati? No, it sucks. Um, I, I, this is the one time that I wish I wasn't right this year when I said it'd be a miracle if Burrow made it through the season. Um, I, I right. think I honestly said that last week. Um, and it's it's really disappointing that that he went out. Um, I, again, I, I think Tyler Boyd is probably the only startable player on that offense besides freaking Giovanni Bernard. Um, there you go. At this point, 
Um, no Samaj P Ryan yeah, for you. Mi- who knows if Mick? Yeah, I, I would be very surprised if Joe Mixon comes back um, because they're yes. out of it, and they might as well tank to try to get the best offensive lineman. Um, so if if unfortunately if you're a Mixon owner, um, it, it just sucks. He's he's had a really down year. Um, but yeah, Giovanni Bernard seems to be, um, you know, one of the two playable guys on that offense. Yeah. Uh, other injuries that we had Teddy Bridgewater was cleared to play but sat out uh, Matt Rule added that he would have been at 80 to 85% if he played so you got to think that Bridgewater is going to come back this week right that was so weird yeah it was I, I guess so um, it, it it's <laughs> I, I guess maybe I wasn't paying that good of attention but he, it's I didn't really hear that he wasn't going to play and then all of a sudden I Look Sunday morning and there's a giant O next to his name. I was like, what the hell? After being um, activated. So had to had to make a Yeah, right. I mean, it was just it was just very strange. So um, but I mean that offense looked fine without him. Uh DJ Moore had one of his better games of the year. Um, so yeah, what I it seems like that offense is um is really good because of coaches. Uh shockingly, coaches make a big difference in the NFL. Uh, hopefully the Bears fire Matt Nagy and and hire one of them. Oh, okay. All right, and then we got some more injuries, um, but the only one that's not tied to somebody that I have written down elsewhere for waivers is Randall Cobb and Kenny Stills both exited early against the Patriots. Uh, Stills had a leg injury. Cobb suffered a toe injury considered to be significant. So see you later, Randall Cobb and Kenny Stills. Not that anybody was widely using that. Yeah, and and hello, Brandon Cooks. More, or at least more Brandon Cooks. Uh, He only had five targets this past week. Um, He's very slowly but surely after a slow start been working himself up to be a wide receiver too. Uh, Currently, he's wide receiver 28 on the year. Um, I would expect that to finish right about there, honestly, because of the next couple weeks. Uh, at Detroit, I think he'll have a really big week this week. But then he's got Indy, Chicago, Indy, uh, three straight weeks, uh, which is uh, a little on the tougher side. So I, I would not wee. be surprised to see him finish right about where he is right now. Just a wee bit. All right. Let's get into these ads of the week here. Um, let's start with Taysom because you already brought him up. Taysom Hill, the quarterback. My guy. Completed 18 of 23 passes for 230 plus yards. <laughs> rushed. 10 times for another 51 yards and two scores. Uh, He only had two rushes in the first half, both of which were scrambles. So it's not like he had a ton of designed runs. Yep. Um, He was able to support Michael Thomas, who had nine catches for more than just over 100 yards and a whopping 51% target share for Michael Thomas. 51%. Next three games are at Denver, at Atlanta, at Philly. I don't, I think, I'm not excited about the Taysom Hill experience at all. I think he's a quarterback too, propped up by his rushing. I don't think he, like he threw some balls down the field, but like I watched every single pass attempt that he had and I want to say his average pass attempt was like two yards behind the line of scrimmage on a screen to somebody like no stop it he threw a couple downfield a couple that, that he actually threw short yeah uh, that one oh my it, god one, to what one Sanders? got called back <sighs> yeah but the he, okay, he also had bird. like a 55 yard touchdown throw to Emmanuel Sanders that got called back to a due to a holding call um, so, I mean, his, his numbers actually could have looked better. Um, I mean, completing 75% of your passes as a, as a quarterback that everybody thought they were just going to run the whole game. I think he, I think that's going to be his lowest, um, rushing yards. And this is from somebody that, that bet on his over rushing yards of 48 and a half. Thank you so much for cashing that at the end, Taysom Hill. I appreciate you. Um, so I, I, I think the I think the fifty one is going to be. Yeah, yeah. The over under was forty eight and a half yards. Uh, he he had that really. They only ran that one design running play where they 
have like the fullback off to the like in the slot and he motions them in and then it's just like a power to the to the right or left side they only ran that play once um and that's kind of been his like mo um like the the two weeks before they had seven carries for 54 yards and eight carries for 45 and then this week 10 for 51 um it, it almost seemed like they were slowing him down here's why i think he's playable one rushing yards obviously Against Denver, I think he's going to rush a lot more. You saw what Denver did to Tua this week. They had him all sorts of confused. Um, so I think that they're going to be running the ball way more than they did this week against Atlanta. And then the following week, week 13, they're against Atlanta again. Like, you cannot tell me that you don't want to start Taysom Hill against Atlanta. You have, like, he's going to be a top 10 quarterback play that week. He just is. Yes, I would want to play him I, against I don't wanna, Atlanta. I, but that's out yeah. of the next three games. Yep. Out of the next three games, that's the only He's only got to play two more because Drew Brees comes off IR. Okay. Him and his 15, what, 15 fractures or 12 fractures or whatever he was dealing with. Some crazy l- number of unbelievableness. Yeah, and, and still playing. S- 78% uh per 78% completion percentage he had no passing touchdowns but if he gets a rushing touchdown or two it, i mean honestly he's he's a better passer than Tim Tebow and he runs similarly right i mean they they they're very similar players do you think that he is hands down the starter for the Saints next season uh yeah i do I mean, they they paid him a lot of money to keep him around this year, um, and they're going to be in cap hell, um, and they're going to have to make a ton of cuts. So I would not be surprised to see them um, just have it be Taysom Hill and, and Alvin Kamara, just um, you know, rushing the ball like sixty or seventy percent of the time because they can't pay anybody else. Well, it was worth noting that Kamara actually had one of uh, he had his lowest scoring game of the year. Uh, only putting up 10 and a half points, yeah. 13 rushes, 45 yards in a score. So really that, that might be concerning because then you get that whole, you know, the quarterback that runs and vultures the touchdowns at the goal line, a la Cam Newton. Right. So uh, I, that would be my Camaro. Well, right. Concern. And, and before this week he had, he had at least five catches in every game except for one and he had zero this week. So that you know that that's clearly a, a reason for concern uh, if you're an Alvin Kamara owner. Um, but again, it's two more weeks. Um, then you get Breeze for the playoffs. Hopefully, you'll be in the playoffs. And right, and Breeze will be back, and Kamara will be full steam ahead. There you go. All right. Um, uh, as 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 far as the fab amount that I would put on Taysom Hill, um, if if you're desperate at quarterback, I I think you reasonably can go. F- like seven to eight percent i wouldn't do more than that um just because it's two weeks fair fair um next up we have uh another quarterback ad and that is andy dalton rostered in a whopping three and a half percent blandy blandy dalton rostered in a whopping three and a half percent of leagues uh completed approximately two-thirds of his passes uh, 68, 69, well, actually 69% of passes for just over 200 yards, three scores and a pick. Uh, I had a couple rushing attempts for really no yards, but put up almost 20 fantasy points. Nice to see that offense move the ball. That was fun. Well, well played on the, on the words there. Um, I, uh, I, he, I, I really like what Andy, but, Andy Dalton. I I can't almost not say Blandy. Um, I I really like what Andy Dalton did this week. I actually started him in a league. um, Wow, that's gutsy. That that I really needed to win in. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, Minnesota's passing defense sucks unless they play the Bears. So um, here's why I would not bid on Andy Dalton. Um, The next couple weeks is against Washington. Do you really want to be eating or sitting around on Thanksgiving after digesting all of this turkey and watch Andy Dalton against a really, really good Washington defense. Like that will give you more indigestion than you probably already will have. 
Um, so I like I, I would not want to start Andy Dalton because I would not want to have to watch him on Thanksgiving. Uh, and then the following week is at Baltimore, which is not a good matchup either. Um, week 14, since he's obviously good, and then he finishes up against San Francisco and Philly. Um, the, the, none of those are really great matchups. Um, he he might like he's got enough weapons. He might be serviceable. I would not bid more than zero dollars. Okay, noted. I think you'll probably get him for zero in a lot of leagues. Um, yeah, it was just nice to see that offense move the ball as somebody that rosters Zeke in a couple leagues. That was a welcome return yep. to offensive production. Next up, we have Derek Carr, rostered in 38% of leagues. Derek uh, had a, he's like Mr. Reliable this year. Another 21 and a half point week for yeah. him. Um, completed almost 75% of his passes for 275 yards, three scores and a pick. Uh, I've added a few rushing attempts for a couple yards, but really nothing there. But 21 and a half points going back and forth with Kansas City. It, they really, it really looks like that division is going to be tight between uh, KC and, and Oakland. So, or excuse me, Las Vegas, rather. Um, that was a fun game to watch. Yeah, he, he actually had 29 this week. He, he was projected for 21 and, and dropped the 29 spot. Three, three tutties against, like, a, a Kansas City defense has actually been pretty good. Um, especially against wide receivers and Derek Carr didn't care. Um, you know, both times out against Kansas City, um, had had three touchdown passes. Um, or sorry, I'm looking in my in my six point for a passing touchdown league. Sorry, yeah, about that. 21 right. and a half. I um, was like, no, no, so, yeah, yeah, sorry, six in a six point for a passing touchdown and 20 yards, whatever, doesn't matter. But anyway, he, he was really good. Um, I and the next two weeks, and and this is what's important. He's got at Atlanta, which I mean, if Taysom Hill can do well, Derek Carr should be able to do okay. Um, and then he's got the Jets, who I mean, Herbert basically had 300 yards passing in the first half against them this week, um, where where they are in full blown tank mode. Um, so yeah, that's uh, th- those next two weeks with Derek Carr um, is pretty good, and and along with that, like, and maybe we'll get there, but Nelson Aguilar is playable. Uh, potentially Hunter Renfro is playable this week uh, against Atlanta um, and the Jets, for that matter, uh, just because of matchups. I like it. I like it. All right. Well, that ends our quarterback ads of the week. Um, great streaming options available there. Let's move on to running back, shall we? Um, I was. Can I, can I add one one more? Just just a yeah, random name. Got? So Drew Brees is rostered in only 60.4% of leagues. A bunch of people dropped him. Um, so maybe he's somebody that you would look at adding, depending on what your roster flexibility looks like. Just wanted to throw it out there in case he's there. And then, uh, all right. Now, somebody I was extremely excited about was ready to do a victory lap on, but can no longer do so is one J.K. Dobbins. We finally had the J.K. <laughs> Dobbins take over. In week 10, he had a 42% snap rate, six touches. This week, 63% snap rate, 17 touches. He basically had all of the running back touches after the first quarter. Uh, He had 45% of rush attempts, but 75% of those coming from the running back position. He had 67% of the short down and distance snaps. And he was in on 100% of the two-minute offense snaps. Uh, Edwards, Gus Edwards, finished the game with three carries, zero targets. Mark Ingram finished the game with two carries, zero targets. Justice Hill got in a couple times, not meaningful work. So J.K. Dobbins is here. The owners rejoice. He has landed. And he was on everybody's bench for this game. And then he got COVID. He was. And now, if, by the way, Dobbins is available. Dobbins is available in more than 50% of leagues. He is a league winner. When he comes back from COVID 
And is he? If he assumes the lead back role again, yes, absolutely. With that schedule, it's pathetic. Like if he's if he's getting all of the short down and distance, the the two minute offense, and he's getting seventy five percent of the running back attempts. Yes, one hundred percent. So we we've been here before. It was four weeks ago, and Mark Ingram was Pittsburgh, out. Where he had fifteen carries, one hundred thirteen yards. I I understand that, but we're here again against the Tennessee defense, which can't really stop anyone. And the week before that against New England, he had six touches. So, hey, like, what was it? Three weeks ago, you're like, he's here, he's here, go out, spend all your fab, he's a league winner, and then he did nothing for two weeks. If you can, like, he's only had three weeks over 10 points. Like, I, you can't trust him. You can't trust that offense. No, you can't. And that's sorry. I wanted to see it against Pittsburgh. I wasn't going to start him against Pittsburgh anyways, but I, I wanted to see it two weeks in a row from him before plugging him in against Dallas. But now because of COVID on a short week, there's no way he plays Thursday. They haven't even talked about rescheduling the game. So, I mean, it's not going to happen anyways. He's going to be out for two weeks at, at a minimum. And so hopefully he's back in time for the at Dallas least a game. week. We, we don't know if he has COVID though. <laughs> oh, he tested positive. He's just a close per- contact. Oh no, he did test positive. Yeah. Harbaugh said All he right. tested so, positive him and Mark. Ingram. I mean, the entire Titans defense has to have COVID. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that sucks. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you're supposed to do. I, if like, do you drop him for two weeks? Hopefully you have an IR spot. I know you're going to. I know you're going to say, hold on to him. Um, I would right, ask, hopefully you have an IR slot where you designate COVID specifically. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. No, I mean, his playoff schedule at Cleveland at home against Jacksonville at home against the Giants. I am not dropping him for that. If he's the starting running back at uh, week 13 against Dallas, I am starting him throughout the playoffs. But that's the thing is when he comes back okay. in week 13, um, assuming he's healthy, he could even be splitting carries because he was out sick, you know, like it, we don't know what the working right. work back is going to be for these guys. So it just sucks. <sighs> so which- uh, if you if you listen to our show last week, uh, we, we talked about Cam, Cam Akers being terrible uh, and having a laughing fit. He just had a three yard touchdown catch. So Yay. Jason was right. Maybe you should have picked up Cam Akers and I shouldn't have called him terrible. Um, so how so much when it, when it comes are you to spending Dobbins, on Dobbins? Um, I mean, if, if you th- if you think that he's going to be the starter going forward, then like blow it all because of schedule. If you don't think Dobbins is going to be the starter going forward, then like 5 to 15% like is reasonable, especially because people aren't going to bid on him because he's currently listed as being out. I can see it both ways. Um that's I mean, honestly it's it's you go with your gut. What do you believe if you think Dobbins is going to be the guy? We saw how bad Cam was for those couple of weeks after coming back. Um, if he struggles at all, he's not going to play because Ingram and the Gus bus are there. Well, Ingram is confirmed positive with COVID too. So that's why because of that, because of those two being out, the real priority ad is Gus Edwards, which I hate because he yep. can't catch a football. So there's really limited upside there. I mean, he's, Gonna be well. That, that works out perfectly because he has a quarterback that can't throw it to him. There you go. You know, equally as yeah, important as in order to catch the ball, you have to have it thrown to you in a place where you could theoretically reach to to catch it. Um. So, but look for Gus Edwards to take first and second down, and Justice Hill to be in on third down, and the two minute offense, and to I don't know. I don't really want to start any of them against Pittsburgh this week. Um, 
Gus will probably have, I would guess, 70 yards, maybe a score. And I don't know. I I would be praying for that if I put Gus Edwards in my lineup. If they aren't healthy enough to come back, though, and he has it, he has the gig the rest of the season, then that's an incredible pickup. But who knows? Yeah, I think he's a 5%, 10% guy just to have him for this week and potentially next week. Um, because, you know, I mean, James Robinson did all right against the Steelers this week. Um, and if, if they're going to run the ball as much as they, they have historically against the Steelers, then like I think they ran the ball, what, like 45 times or 50 times against them a couple weeks ago. Um, I, I think there'll be plenty of opportunity for Gus Edwards against the Steelers this week. Also, live on the podcast, because I can't stop playing him, I'm literally going to be dropping Marquise Brown right now, because <laughs> every time I see him in his matchup, I always think like, this is the week that Marquise Brown's going to be good. Um, so literally, right now, I am dropping him, uh, and if, oh my, oh, <laughs> it cannot be completed because rosters haven't reset this week. Sorry, damn it. So I'm going to have to maybe do it tomorrow. Mm. Huh. Better look that, next that was going to feel so therapeutic. Instead of Hollywood Brown, can we <laughs> call him B movie Brown? Because that's really what this is. <laughs> oh, oh man! All right, uh, let's move on, shall we? Wow. Uh, next up, we have James White, and he's really only addable because Rex Burkhead suffered a torny ACL over the weekend. Uh, after going out with injury, James White caught six of nine targets for 64 yards. He also had five rushes for almost 20 yards. He has Arizona and the Chargers up the next two weeks who are giving up the 12th most and 18th most points to running backs, respectively. Look, if Burke heads out, give me some James White. I mean, he's going to be the pass catching back. I think he'll be a serviceable flex play. Um, probably, I would say lower i'd probably rank him somewhere in the 20s so either as a low end rb2 high end yeah, flex it'll be, be a high high rb3 probably yeah yeah somewhere in there i um if he if he doesn't you know james white a couple of years ago was a rb1 and all of a sudden they're just like not using him he's better than rex burkhead right like i I don't understand how Rex Burkhead was who he was this year. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I, James White, when he plays is always produced. He's always been really good. Uh, in the couple games that, that Rex was out, um, he produced with seven catches, eight catches, and now six catches. So yeah, fire up an oldie, but goodie and James White. Um, I, I think you'll probably be able to get him for, for damn near free. Um, because he's so far down on the list and it's not like he exploded this week because he didn't have any touchdowns. Um, and obviously in PPR leagues, he's going to have considerably more value, um, potentially even like a JD McKissick level value going forward. If, if Cam is going to target him as much as he's been targeting running backs the last couple of weeks. So I, I wouldn't go crazy because I think you can get him for, um, you know, less than 5%, um, because I, I don't. I think he's far enough down on the list and rostered in not enough leagues where um, people will be targeting him. Yeah, I agree with you on that 5% or less. Uh, he's a steal of deal. Um, now, this next mm -hmm. one is also injury driven. Uh, even with the injury, I hate it. And that is Frank Gore, who's listed here because LaMichael P. Ryan left. Uh, left Sunday's game with an ankle injury. Um, so I guess give me some Frank Gore. Uh, he is eternal. <laughs> he put up 14 <laughs> points in a half PPR, <laughs> 15 rush attempts, 61 yards, a touchdown, a couple catches for 10 yards. Look, I don't. He's got the world's largest slice. He has the largest slice of the world's smallest pie being the New York Jets 
offense and mm. its production compared to any other offense. And if he's going to, if he's going to be getting 15 to 20 touches, do you like, do you like pie, Jason? I do like pie. I love pie. Do you like pie? I do. So if, if you like pie, then why not take the biggest slice of the smallest pie? Because guess what? You get him. You get, you basically get the whole pie. You don't even have to share him. He's not sharing. Like Frank Gore somehow, and I talked about this before the season, is going to have over 600 rushing yards. He's right on pace. And he's going to be the only guy there probably the rest of the season. Um, he's probably the pickup of the week other than the Gus bus. Um, for me, for, for short term, I, you could argue Dobbins longer term. Uh, he's only rostering 8.8% of leagues and he was RB12 this week. I don't, I don't know what, what else you want from him. Miami, Vegas, Seattle, the next three. Those are fine matchups. Um, He's only had under 10 carries twice the entire season. Uh, and I would not expect that to happen again. And especially if he's going to be getting catches. Um, I think he's solidly an RB2 the rest of the way. Sorry. Only had under 10 carries twice all season. Only gone over 10 points once. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. it was last week when he was the only guy there. I know, and he will be the only guy there. I mean, they got rid of Le'Veon, and now LaMichael's injured, so here we go. And LaMichael's going to miss some time, so for at least the next couple weeks, fire up some Frank Gore at home against Miami, at home against Vegas. So, yeah, I'm with you. I It's 5%. not the guy or the injury that you want to spend all your fab on. No, it, it, I mean... You got to make sure to get him, right? I mean, th this is one of those injuries that you're you're getting a starter locked in where I could argue like everybody has Frank or fatigue. So 5% you can probably get him for that. I would not be afraid to go higher because I think the production will be there. Okay, I'll give you that. I just I'm not going to spend more than 5% for a couple weeks. Um, That brings me to my next person. And that is Rashad Penny. He's out there in a lot of leagues. You got a lot of unhealthy running backs on that team. He's um, yep. He's ahead of schedule in his recovery per head coach Pete Carroll. I just think 2.2%. If he's out there, he should potentially be on a roster. So I would look at stashing Rashad Penny, who I think you could probably pick up for free. And yeah, that's uh, I would spend a yep. dollar on him. Maybe that's it. Nope. Free. Don't don't spend more than a more than zero. If this is, um, you know, if you're in a very competitive league and you have no money left, this would be a target um, just just for her stash down the line. Uh, P. Carroll last week did say that he's a few weeks away. So that was after this week. So. Probably after next week. Um, so he, he could be somebody that, that would not be surprising to, to be active, um, you know, come week 13 or week 14. Um, and then you got to figure out if you can actually play him uh, once once he's active. Uh, Hyde looked pretty good and we have no idea what's going on with Chris Carson. Um, yeah. So, yeah, he, R Rashad Penny's def definitely stashable. And then. Um... And my last running back ad is, you know, has to do with cuffing season because we've talked about this to the last couple podcasts. Oh. Tony Pollard and Alexander Madison are out there in more than 50% of leagues. They're out there in like more than 75% of leagues. So those are guys where we're getting to playoff season. If you are a playoff team with either Zeke or Dalvin Cook, you should add either Tony Pollard or Alexander Madison in case something happens to him. You don't lose out because people start to add handcuffs towards the end of the regular season to handcuff their studs going into the playoffs or pick up, you know, the top three, four, five handcuffs in the league. 
and Tony Pollard and Alexander Madison are among them. So those are just a couple guys I would say, hey, if they're out there in your league, you should probably add them to the end of your bench. So. Yep, I agree. Um, other things I just want to bring bring to people's attention. Um, we, I, I don't need to go into too many specifics on a bunch of these guys because they're obviously very well known. But if anybody, if any of these guys are available in your league, you should obviously add them and pick them up if you're not paying attention. David Montgomery is only rostered in 86.5% of leagues. He has a cake uh, playoff matchup. Um, and if, if Mitchie's back, which it seems like they're going to go to Trubisky if he's healthy, um, I do think that that helps the run game just because he's more active and more likely to dump it down to him when he's keeping plays alive. Uh, David Johnson ro- is rostered in 83.2% of leagues. Um, and so if that uh, like 70% of leagues is is substantial. So if for some reason he's available, I think you should add him. He's coming back off of c- concussion after this week. Um, he, he should be active. Duke Johnson has done nothing to, to take that job away from David Johnson. Uh, Raheem Mostert uh, is rostered in 78.5% of leagues. Um, who knows if he's going to get healthy again or stay healthy, um, but 20% of leagues that he's available in, he, he should be rostered. Um, this one's a little surprising to me, and it's really the last running back that I have, and it's Miles Gaskin. Um, he's available uh, in 35% of leagues still, um, and, and he was on an absolute tear before he got hurt. Um, if he is available, you should not let him be available anymore. Agreed. Agreed. Agreed on all of those guys. All right. Well, that's going to do it for running backs. Shall we talk about some pass catchers? First up. First up, please. We, first up, we have Michael Pittman of the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, he's fantastic. He's still only rostered in 25 percent of leagues, which is criminal. Um, double digit points, mid teens each of the last two weeks. Uh, had admittedly had a slump in targets this week, however, against Green Bay, only having three targets, converted all of them into catches for 66 yards total and a touchdown, including one beautiful 45 yard touchdown reception. Basically, it was a like a, I don't know, 10, 15 yard cross that he turned into a 45 yard, you know, weaving through defenders um, down the field for a score. So, yeah. Man, Tigers does he had no idea what's going on. Right. So I think he could be a yeah, second I agree half with you. stud. Um, I, I, yeah. I, I had him ranked at 12 this week. Um, and I, I, if you watch that Titans game a couple of weeks ago, I mean, he was like their only, eh, not their only guy because their defense was like, their defense was good. And, and that was the Naheem Hines game. Um, speaking of, he did absolutely jack this week, which is hilarious. Um, but if, if you watch that <laughs> game ag- against Tennessee, like Michael Pittman, besides Neem Hines was like the only guy that they had on offense. Um, so back to back, basically 14, 15 point weeks. Um, and he's got Tennessee this week. I would expect him to, um, have a very similar game to what he did a couple weeks ago and hopefully mix in a touchdown. Um, I, he's very solidly an R or sorry, a wide receiver two this week with, with even better upside, um, against Tennessee this week for me. But yeah, he, there's no reason why he should not be rostered, um, from a pickup ability standpoint. Um, it, he might be worth a 15% bid, um, just because I think that he has that upside going forward as their wide receiver one, uh, Tennessee at Houston at Las Vegas, Houston again. Um, those are all great matchups to get you to championship Sunday. And then at Pittsburgh, isn't even that scary, honestly, with how much they throw the ball. Um, so he, he is very much in play for, um, you know, being a, a high upside wide receiver to the rest of the way, in my opinion. And I think you should spend it so you don't miss out on him. I like it. So what's your fab recommendation? 15, 20%. Yeah, I think 15% is reasonable. Um, I'd be surprised if somebody was higher than that in your league. Yeah, and remember, like we always say, add an extra dollar or two on top of your bid to make sure you get them because everybody likes to end their bids in fives and zeros. 
So just sprinkle an extra dollar on top if you got it. So that way you get them and somebody else doesn't. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. Our next player to add this week is another New York Jet. And I feel dirty again, but I don't disagree with the ad. Uh, it is Denzel Mims, who is seeing almost double digit targets now. He's a rookie. He didn't play for the first majority of the season, um, but has really turned it on since basically rejoining the team in week seven um, against the Chargers. Had three catches for 71 yards on eight targets. So we'd like to see some more efficiency there. I think you have to keep in mind who's throwing him the football. Um, but I mean, upcoming matchups, Miami, Las Vegas, Seattle, two out of three of those are not bad. And maybe you get some junk time against Miami. I'm not sure um, if they'll even be able to secure a league, a lead with as bad as Tua played this week. But um, it, it is a one of the tougher defenses to go against. So, but Mims, I mean, the targets are there. So I, I think he's at an end of the bench stash. Um, definitely should be prioritized in Dynasty. Like, this guy is so good. But Yeah, it's tough, right? Because, I mean, Jamison Crowder was the guy um, where when he played, you know, he had the double-digit targets. Um, since he's come back, his targets have been two against New England and three against the Chargers. Um, and uh, that ain't going to cut it. So, I mean, would you... So, first question, do you think you should drop Jamison Crowder? I, I think that's gutsy to do um, with, with some good matchups, especially week 14 against Seattle. Knowing that their game script should help them um, going forward where they're going to get behind and have to throw a lot. So, and, and besides that, like Brashad Perryman um, has been fine. He's had a touchdown. He had two touchdowns two weeks ago. Um, and then a touchdown this last week against the chargers. Um, so, I mean, he, he's been the best fantasy wide receiver that they've had. So I don't know what to do with their back or with their wide receivers, honestly. Um, I don't think the three Jets should be rostered. Um, and trying to figure out who the person to roster is is tough. Um, and and is it still Jameson Crowder or is it Mims or is it Brashad Perriman? I honestly don't know the answer um, because they've been so middling um, the, the last couple of weeks and kind of been spreading it out. Okay, I'll give you that. I just thought he was a viable stash. Um, are there any yeah, other... absolutely. I, I think he is too if, if he continues to get all those targets that he's getting. Um, from, a, from a potentially available standpoint, um, I, I would just throw out a couple names again. Uh, Julian Edelman uh, is rostered in 35.4% of leagues currently. Um, he had a knee procedure a couple weeks ago, and it sounds like he might be coming back before the end of the season. Um, so he's somebody that potentially you could add. Um, just throwing that out there. Um, Brandon Ayuk is rostered in only 68.1% of leagues. Um, he's really good, especially if Debo Samuel isn't playing. And speaking of Debo Samuel, he's only rostered in 52.6% of leagues. Um, which is incredible. incredibly low. So, it, like, I, I think all all of those guys, well, at least the two 49ers receivers should be rostered. Um, and, and Julian Edelman, I think you can make the case for him being rostered, seeing as he's potentially coming back uh, from the knee issue that he had um, from all indications. Um, you know, he, they people thought he might be designated for return last week, and he wasn't. Um, he still could be this week as you're listening to this. So just keep an eye out on that. Um, but theoretically he'll be back for week 13 or week 14. Um, and week 13, he's got the chargers, which have a very leaky defense. Um, week 14 is against the Rams, which is, you know, I think they're giving up the least amount of points to wide receivers. Um, but 15, 16 at Miami Buffalo, those are fine matchups. So, um, Edelman should be rostered. 
Uh, and so should Ayuk and, and Debo. All right. And then my last one is going to be Tim Patrick of the Denver Broncos. Tim Patrick uh, had eight targets, converted them into five catches for 119 yards against the Miami Dolphins, um, 14 and a half fantasy points. Last week, he only had six targets on the stat sheet, but he had all six of those targets in the first half of the game before he got thrown out for fighting. So, um, yeah, (laughs) Tim Patrick is a man. The week before that, he had nine targets. So... I mean, you're talking basically close to on pace for 30 targets over three games, double digit fantasy points in all of them. I think Tim Patrick could be a thing over the second half of the season. So I'm just think it should be a name that you're aware of. And then that's going to do it for receivers. Um, can I add one more? Uh, yeah, no, just just to add Nelson Aguilar, he's only had two bad games his last seven weeks, and I and we talked about how he's got a pretty good matchup in the next two weeks. Um, so five of the last seven games, he's had a receiving touchdown, and I know it's hard to predict those touchdowns, but Atlanta this week, the Jets next week. Um, and by the way, just throwing this out there, I mean, if they're facing Atlanta this week and the Jets next week. You should potentially add the Raiders defense because those are two pretty good uh, matchups. The the Saints uh, sacked Matt Ryan eight times um, wow. this last week. And uh, the Jets are the Jets. So, you know, p- the, the Raiders are potentially a, a very deep sleeper um, the next couple of weeks. I think they're only rostered in like two or three percent of leagues um, just off the top of my head. Um, so yeah, the, the Raiders defense should be, um, playable the next two weeks for sure. I like it. Um, my wide re- or excuse me, my tight end ad of the week is Jordan Reed. Uh, the fill in for George Kittle. Um, he was on by this week, but the week before had six targets for five catches for 62 yards against New Orleans. I just think that the tight end position is featured in that offense and Jordan Reed is a good tight end when healthy. And I think he is viable um, against the Rams this week. Um, So I would, I would look there potentially if you're absolutely struggling. Um, I mean, it was also nice to see Dalton Schultz have a little bit of production, 10 and a half points with Andy Dalton back. Six targets, four catches for 25 yards and a score. I wouldn't, I mean, he's going to have a lot of those lines. I just, I just want, I just want a tight end to be as good as Travis Kelsey or Taysom <laughs> Hill playing quarterback. But there's just, hasn't uh, Darren Waller is pretty good this past week. Yeah. Yeah. I, so like Dalton, the, the Dalton Schultz thing, like he's still tight end 11. Um, and he, you know, he's had a rough couple of weeks, but I mean, those targets that have are have been there the last three games that he's played, um, you know, eight targets, seven targets, six targets. Um, they're throwing the ball enough where Dalton Schultz is startable, probably going forward, um, just because there's not that many tight ends that are getting that number of targets, chase targets that we, we've preached it from the get go is chase the targets he's probably going to be in the top 12 easily of target uh receivers um going the rest of the way so I, if you're in a 12 teamer I, I he should be started going for somebody should be starting him um as far as other tight ends george so do you think you should roster george kittle i mean he's currently rostered in 72.4 percent of leagues um and if he's available, do you think somebody should pick him up? Um, he's available in, in the league that we play in. Um, if if he only comes back for week 16, theoretically, let's say that's the case. Do you hold on to him starting now for the next five weeks and clog up your roster? Well, the thing is, he has... They're not going to start him if they don't have a chance to make the playoffs, is my opinion on the matter. 
Right now they're four and six and in last place behind the Seahawks, Rams, and Cardinals. So they don't have Garoppolo. They don't have Mostert. They don't have Debo. Granted, some of those guys are coming back now. Uh, like Debo should be back. And they don't have Kittle. So I don't, and they don't have Bosa on defense. Like they don't have a lot of guys. They don't have a ton of guys, actually. Um, if you want to start talking about all their defensive losses too. So I really think that by the time he could come back to play, that they will be firmly outside of playoff contention and he will be shut down for the year. I agree with you. If, if you have a free IR slot sitting around, um, George Kittle should be rostered in my opinion. Um, if you don't have a free IR slot available, then he shouldn't be rostered. Um, if you know that, that's just my take on it. Um, is is he should be rostered if you have free IR slots? And I mean, we do in our league. I'm very surprised that somebody hasn't picked him up. Um, that would have an open IR slot. Um, other tight ends. I uh, we mentioned Goddard. Um, he was really good this week. He's rostered in just under sixty percent of leagues. Um, six targets in back-to-back weeks um, is, I mean, Dalton Schultz has had more targets than him the last couple of weeks. I'm just saying. Um, so <laughs> like Goddard's good. I mean, Schultz is just, you know, they're going to be very similar. Um, Goddard had the touchdown and I, is Andy Dalton better than Carson Wentz at quarterback? It's, it's possible that, that their offense is better going forward. Um, between the two also random side note i do think you can you can play whoever's playing the philadelphia eagles uh from for a deep defense perspective uh seattle this week green bay next week um for for philly uh so new orleans week 14 just just put it on your radar um and then zach Ertz is still rostered in 58% of leagues. Um, he, theor- you know, he was designated to return from IR last week, I believe. Um, so he should be back um, within the next week or two. Um, if you're desperate at tight end, he's another guy that you can add um, that, that could have value going forward. All right. And then uh, that's going to get us to defense. And I have one defensive stream of the week I'd like to talk you about. You never talk about defense. I do now. Here we are, week 12, baby. Uh, wow. I want to talk about the New York football giants. They go up against the Cincinnati Bengals this week who will not have Joe Burrow. They will probably not have Joe Mixon. And so the Bengals were already a good target before as far as defensive matchups go. But the Giants are 11th mm-hmm. at the position. Um, they've been serviceable most weeks in plus matchups. And I really think that they're going to absolutely hammer Ryan Finley or whoever the bungles put back there. So I think the giants are a great streamer. Yeah, no, great, great call that they've had at least two sacks in every game, uh, this year. And Cincinnati has one of the worst lines in football that we've talked about previously with Joe Burrow. Um, so yeah, I would not be surprised to see them have at least five this week, honestly. Um, cause they, they really get home with the front four. Um, and if they're going to be that good on defense, that, that translates into offense too. So just be aware of that because Cincinnati can't stop anybody either. Um, so yeah, I, I love that. Wonderful. Well, that's going to do it for today. We are going to transfer to the social media page. If you found anything entertaining, informative today, please listen, like, subscribe, uh, ring the bell if you're on YouTube. Um, Follow us on social media. Twitter is coming up on a thousand followers. We are at the FF Sackos everywhere. We post fire memes. We have fire hot takes. It's great. So thank you guys for listening and coming along. Have a good one. I can't believe we didn't talk about how we were wearing matching shirts. Like we we wore matching shirts and it didn't even get brought up. Sad. I just wanted to look cute with you. Sackos. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter 
at the FF Sackos. <laughs>